What's up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Um, we have yet another option for you to choose from if you're building out your night vision binoculars or monocular or whatever. If you've been following us on Instagram, and you should be, we just recently posted a little announcement that we now have the Acton Black 50 degree optics in stock. So as we always do, we're going to do kind of a product overview, a review, whatever you want to call it. Um, before I get to the video we took in the field comparing these three optic systems, I want to talk about why 50 degree optics matter and kind of who they're for. So as the name implies, 50 degree optics increase your field of view from the standard 40 degree field of view to 50. Um, it's not without its trade-offs, but it's up to you to decide whether or not that those trade-offs are worth it. So uh, first and foremost, the biggest trade-off with the 50 degree optics for most people is going to be the decreased eye box. We did a video solely on the boom slang previously. Um, these share a lot of the same characteristics in that respect. The PVS 14 style 40 degree optics are going to have a very generous eye relief where the 50 degree is kind of restricted. So why does this matter? Uh, if you've watched our video on manual gain, I think I briefly touched on it, but then, but now I'll go ahead and um, kind of explain it further. When you're using manual gain or night vision in any capacity where you want to utilize both the night vision in the center of your field of view, as well as your natural um, vision periphery, it's best to keep the night vision somewhere in between all the way out on the mount and all the way towards your face. With these uh, higher field of view optics, it's kind of hard to do that. So something to consider uh, when making your selections. Uh, do I think these are right for everybody? Absolutely not. I think the people that would benefit from these most are the people that are going to use them to do um, what extracurricular activities, hiking, you know, uh, shooting for fun, stuff like that. If you're going to do a lot of uh, work type stuff, I might recommend you stay with you know, a standard 40 degree optic, be it um, these ones or RPO or a myriad of other options that you can choose from. Let's go ahead and we're gonna weigh them real quick and then we'll talk about the price and then we'll switch over to the uh, actual video comparison, you know, looking through these things. So first up, we've got our standard PVS 14 style optics that we offer on our uh, website with any of the builds. This is a objective and an eyepiece. Zero. Uh, total weight for one eyepiece and one objective is 113.6-ish grams. So call it 114 grams. The boom slang, I've removed the uh, eye cup retainer to make it fair. Uh, comes in at 96 grams. So 113, 96, and the Acton Black 50 degree optics come in at, I think it's 130 something, 131.3, so call it 131. So one of the big advantages of the boom slang early on that we noticed was uh, it has similar weight characteristics to RPO. It's not as light as RPO, but it is a, quite a bit lighter than some of the mil spec options. Uh, these particular optics um, are lighter than some of the ones that are out on the market from Fujian, uh, like the Carson or Noctis, Noctis Optics, they actually have more lens elements in the white, the eyepiece. Um, is it necessary? That's neither here nor there, but um, there is a, a slight weight penalty with going with the Acton Black. Um, you might be asking yourself, like, why am I interested in this, these optics, and we'll get to that. Uh, second, let's talk about the price. If you go on our night vision builder, um, I pulled all these prices from the, the binocular builder, so cut them in half if you're building a monocular. To add the standard mil type, type optics to your binocular, the price is uh, $599. To add the boom slang to your uh, bino build, it's uh, $1799, and to go to, with the Acton Black 50 degree optics, it's uh, $1999. Obviously, these prices are subject, subject to change. It's early March, 2025, so, um, if you're watching this video a few years from now, everything could be different. Um, at any rate, all of these options have their advantages and disadvantages. We're going to go ahead and switch to the actual field testing of these and 
kind of let you come to your own conclusion on what might work best for you. Uh, I will say pay close attention to both the center resolution, uh, the edge clarity and edge distortion while watching these clips. All right, guys, we're going to start for whoever's listening. We're going to start the first phase of this lens comparison. Go ahead and walk this off and see how far away this is. Hopefully the wind stops blowing over my motherfucking targets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're at ten meters from this target here. Um, this is with a Carson, Noctis, whatever you want to call it, PVS-14. Um, L3 filmless tubes installed. Got a good focus. Just want you to get a good look uh, at um, all this stuff here. How well is this in focus? How well is the center of the frame in focus? Just take that all in. All right, I'm trying to film this quickly before the wind knocks over my targets, but we're at the same point. Oh, there they go. So what I want you to focus on is the increased field of view. Instead of seeing the one target in the middle, you now see three. Those have been there the whole time. You just couldn't see them. Um, because we're, you know, stationary and you're limited to 40 degrees field of view. Now you have roughly 50 degree field of view. Yeah, so what I want you to pay attention to is how in focus this target is versus how well you can resolve these two targets over here. So take a look at that for a second. I'm going to turn this off and then I'm going to switch the night vision unit out again for one equipped with the Acton Black 50 degree optics. All right, now we have the PVS-14 with the Acton Black optics installed. I want you to take a look at how well the center target uh, is resolved, how clear that image is, and how clear these two over here are. Do you see a difference? These are all things that need to be considered when <clears throat> evaluating optical performance. <gasps> Fuck. I don't know about you, but I can see definitely a difference. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna withhold my judgment until we rip this footage off the camera and look at it kind of blown up on a bigger screen. Right now I'm looking at a, a seven inch monitor. All right, I moved over and I repositioned these targets. Um, the one center in front of you is 20 meters away. Uh, you can't see it, but there's two other ones on either side here. And they're about uh, seven meters to either side of the center target. So it's a 15 meter spread. Um, I have drawn shapes on each one of the targets. I can tell pretty clearly, and this isn't just me cheating because I drew it, that the shape that is on the center target is in fact a square. I'm gonna pan to the left and the right. And, oh, it fell over. Let's see if you can tell what shape is on each one of these targets. Okay, I'm back, all the targets are up. What shape is that one? I'm gonna really refine the focus here for you. It's about as clear as it's getting. I'm not sure if you can tell. I'm gonna pan over to the one on the left. Check the focus again. Give you a second to try to figure it out. And we're going back to the center. Clean that focus up. All right. I'm going to swap this unit out for the one outfitted with boom slang and we're going to see if we can see a difference. All right, I've got the uh, unit, the PVS-14 with boom slang optics attached to the camera now. Um, I've got the center of the image focused about as good as I can get it. Check that out. What I really want you to focus on is this over here. How clear is this? How clear is your depth of field? How much stuff is in focus? How clear is this extra 10 degrees? Okay. Like, yes, you can see more. 
that is now smaller. Can you tell that there's a square drawn on that target? I don't know, maybe. But take that in for a second. I'm gonna put the other PVS-14 with the Acton Black 50 degree optics on now. All right, we've got the uh, third PVS-14 equipped with the Acton Black 50 degree optic set. And I just want you to evaluate or come to your own conclusions. Uh, is this center target um, more visible, more clearly resolved? Are these targets more clearly resolved? These ones here. Check your depth of field. How much of this stuff is in focus? Uh, just this objective a little bit. Make sure I've got the best possible focus on that center target. I found that on these 50 degree optics, the diopter setting is so critical. And getting to just the right spot is pretty tough. Yeah, that's about as good as it's getting as far as focus goes. But again, take that in. Evaluate it against what we saw. The other optic options. And we're back. All right, guys. So I try to leave some of these reviews or overviews kind of open-ended so you can come to your own conclusions because my use case may not be the same as yours. Um, each one of these optical systems has an edge in one aspect or another. Um, I kind of want to leave it up to you to determine which one would be most beneficial to you. But um, aside from that, if you have any questions about this stuff, please reach out and contact us. We can talk more about it. Uh, go get on the website. Check this stuff out. We've got some pictures uh, if you want to see them up close. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.